Hi, I'm Dweezil Zappa, and today we're going to talk about compound numbers that can go into your playing. And it sounds like I'm talking about something super complicated, but all I'm really talking about is subdivisions that you can create on the guitar. And it's, it's about trying to have your right hand be on autopilot, and your brain can start adding in extra numbers to groupings. So let's say if we're doing a five, which I've talked about it before, is a group of two and a group of three. Now you can have one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, or you can have one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. They both have a different feel, but there's an easy way to apply them to the guitar. So, you know, if I want to be up here in the A minor pentatonic range, and I want to look at um, what this is going to be made out of, let's first explore that it's a three string or a three note per string pattern here. And I'm going to deal with all the notes that exist in there for this. So if I do one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. What's happening is I'm doing a downstroke pull off, then up, 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 and I'm barring that with my finger and I'm kind of rolling across the strings with the pad of my finger. And then I do it again on the next string. Because what you want to be able to try to hear these notes individually instead of as a chord. It's fine to hear it as a chord too, but when you're playing, the faster it is, the easier it is to hear the, the notes individually. Versus you have to do more work when it's slow because you start to see where you have to mute the strings that you don't want to hear with the back part of the pad of your finger. So again, it's a downstroke, pull off, up, 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 downstroke, pull off, up, 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 and downstroke, pull off, up, 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 again, right? But if you wanted to do three and then two, we can do the same thing, but I'm changing fingers now. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. So you can mix them up. So when I'm doing the combinations, that's where the compound number thing comes in because what you can do very easily is once you know how to, to do a two and a three in any direction, either two, then three, or three, then two, you can add another three or you can add another two. So you can get a five that becomes a seven. You can add, uh, you can think of it as a, a five plus a four and you can get a nine. So what you want to be able to do is, is uh, practice adding numbers to these, these combinations so that you can have a continuous rhythm that happens. So if you took all the notes away and you had a five, you'd just be da 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 the idea is to have this sort of uh, ability to predict a rhythm, a pattern that you can do, and it can be any notes, but you can start then combining other numbers into it. So let's say we wanted to do a, a five and then a seven. So I'll just do a simple thing here. One, two, one, two, three. And then if I want to do a seven on the next one, I'll do one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So I'm thinking about it as adding an extra two before my traditional five that I've been doing. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. And then if you have those together, it's a five and a seven that can repeat. So you can get these different sounds rhythmically. But there's other ways you can do it too. If that's giving you a hard time, you can start looking at it on one string or even two strings at a time. So like a five on one string could be one, two, one, two, three. And I like to do it where I have a position change to keep track, so. So that is a simple way to do a five, but then if you wanted to, you could add two more notes to that. So you could do one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. So this idea, when you do it on um, a string, one string, you have a lot of position changes, but you, you have to decide which ones make sense for you to keep track in your mind. Because with a five, the three and a two, if you started with that, 
over time, it starts to sound like two and three. So check it out. If I do this. I started with one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, but it eventually started to sound like one, two, one, two, three. Check it out again. So when you hear it over time, it's it's tricky to, to remember that you started with the three. That's why I like to keep a position change in there because it will help you if you're going to do something that's really repetitive. And the repetitive ideas are cool rhythmically because it gives the band a chance to develop the rhythm. In this particular example, it'll give you a chance to use two fives and a four. The two fives are broken down as one, two, one, two, three, then one, two, three, one, two, and then you can have a four on two strings. This is uh, the lick that I was talking about. So one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, four. So check it out. So when you have uh, the, the opportunity to add in other numbers, you can start mixing it up and you can have like a five and a four. Right? So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And you can start thinking about these things just completely randomly as a practice idea of, of numbers, and you'll start to play totally differently. And so, as an example, the licks I just played. So these are like kinds of phrases that you wouldn't necessarily automatically improvise with, but when you start practicing this, it becomes a natural thing. So you can have different rhythms that, that come into play um, that just sound unguitaristic. And that's the goal here is to break away from standard scale sequencing ideas.